Flame to the Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Monster Prom. Um, previously we named our character. We are going by gender neutral pronouns as they. And uh, we are a uh, Frankensteinish person named Blue. And we kind of took a quiz to see what kind of person we were. And. We bought a Santa gun and a blanket with two holes in it. Now we're seeing where that takes us. Alright, let's continue. You wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst. And also, most likely, tied to the disappearance of Mars Argo. <gasps> oh, what is this? A ghost, perhaps a foreign exchange student. <gasps> what are you talking about? <gasps> oh, gasp. I didn't see you there. Sorry, ghostly. You guys are joking, right? This is clearly just blue wearing a blanket with eye holes put in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam, you don't see anyone saying, Oh, Liam is really just blue wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. What? Exactly, Liam. Even despite the many times he suspected it was so. What? Oh, sorry, little ghost. We were ignoring you. That's true. Tell us. Do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh yes! Divulge! Divulge! Basic ghost knowledge. Ghost main power is levitating stuff. Ultimate ghost prank. Haunt someone into despair. Let's haunt someone into despair. I'm not fun. It's okay, I don't see why I have to be fun. I have plenty of fun to lose. You spot the victim for your prank, the coven. You start running in their direction while screaming your best boo to date. What is this? Maybe it's a minion of Queen Nehelina. Rumors say she's preparing to be the big bad of the next season. Stop booing at us, it's hard enough as it is to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing. This school is unbelievable. Arn. Go they go running, looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Oh no, what have we done? We made them miserable by forcing our little ghost friend to haunt them with its ghost powers. You do realize they just ran at them and, well, booing, right? The only thing I realize is that too much ghost power in our hands has made us evil. We got no time to lose. We need to start living lives of good deeds so we can be forgiven for this. You're right, Scott. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, we can be redeemed for this moment of weakness. I'm not smart or fun now. At least you've led Miranda and Scott onto the path of goodness? Nah, this has been a failure for sure. You lose two smarts and one fun. Hey, at least we didn't lose creativity. Let's go! Right now, I'm failing so hard. Can I choose where I sit? No, nope, just a general table. As you approach your chosen table, you see Liam carefully framing his artfully arranged jelly dessert for a transcendent food pick when... <laughs> food pick! Ride those picks to victory! What? What does that even mean? When I say food pick, you say pick food. 
No. Food. Enough. Stop. Two, four picks, eight. Food do we appreciate? Who picks? Who picks? Go. Ceaseless incessant chanting in this instant. Oh. What? But I'm just trying to help you take the best food pick. You've been trying to take this food pick for like 20 minutes now. You gotta snap a pick so you can eat your tasty food. I don't eat, Scott. I only order this food so I can take pictures of it. And you're not helping. Oh, bro. I know, I know. My cheerleading just isn't good enough. What I need is a cheer partner to take me to the next level. No, what you need is swift kick in the... But too late. Scott's already chosen you as his cheer partner. Now it's up to you. What the two of you will do? Can we not cheer for the food pick? We've got to pick Liam up and toss him in the air. It's the only way to really amp him up. Liam's food picks are art, so we've got to use art to cheer him on. The quiet art of mime. This will help Liam out. You lead Scott in a totally artistic, totally silent mime cheer that involves an invisible rope, an invisible dog sled, an invisible hot dog buffet. What? You eventually leave Scott trapped inside a tiny box and move with Liam to another table. Hmm. Thanks for saving me from that true food photography, or as I call it, photographic des elements cannot be rushed. Are you sure he's okay over there in that box? You're pretty sure he's fine. You let him out at the end of the lunch and he licks your face. But most importantly, Liam tags you in his triumphant food pick. Is this for real? Let's go! That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you are having trouble conveying your points in the discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain two creativity. Yay! Liam stalks past you backstage, pretending to talk to himself, but clearly speaking for your benefit. Oh, the tangled tribulations of the committed Eno class. The talented show is a fascist monument to misguided ego and public spectacle. The dignified thing would be to sit out the events in protest. But that's what everyone expects me to do, therefore. I must participate. The question is how? How do I foreground my native artistic talent while simultaneously making plain my utter contempt for the event? Liam pauses his monologue to give you an opportunity to interject any ideas. 13 minutes of judgmental staring. A live mashup of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring and the theme song from the Ninja Turtles. I feel like this one, because you're still there, but you're not saying any lines. It's a passive aggressive way of doing things. Transcendence. A performance reminiscent of John Cage's 433. But 7 minutes and 27 seconds or longer. A piece to rival Marina Abramovics. Can't pronounce that. Abramovics? Abramovics. We'll go with Abramovics. The artist is present. But better. Because the artist is me. Finally, the entire school will see what I really think of them. Or. 
at least see me thinking about what I really think of them. Thank you. When it comes time for me to perform my masterpiece, I'll be sure to make eye contact with you. Oh my gosh, Liam, that's so nice of you. Let's go. You're about to get closer when suddenly. Greetings, my loves. Greetings, my loves. Beautiful high schoolers. It is I, the interdimensional prince. I am here to rescue you from your mundane existence. Just sign his marriage papers. Not this guy again. Look! Whoa. Gasp. An underworld specter. This again. See? Merry Christmas to me. I'm doing this to, uh... Celebrate Pride by going after a guy. Eh. Wolves... We'll switch it up. We'll start going after the mermaid. What? Again? What again? Liam, this is clearly a kick-ass powerful ghost. Look at its face. So deadpan. No expression at all. That's because it's not a face. It's a sheet. Two holes cut in it. Man, I wish my face had two holes cut in it. That would be fucking metal. Now listen. It's not a face, it's... Ghost friend, help us! Save us from this interdimensional creep! Yeah, do some, something ghostly. Boo! <laughs> Throw a rock at the interdimensional prince. This seems effective. So bold. What? Ouch! It's not the face you think. Inappropriate. The only violence I tolerate is the violence of love. When a man forces his pure love onto his non-mutual lovers. What? That's in the violence of imposed by my army. Usually alongside the former type of violence. I will be back for you, my young lovers. And so he retreats into his dimension. Superb! Metal. The ghost just beat the prince with its ghost power. They just threw a rock at him. Do pay attention. It clearly was a ghost rock. <laughs> What's the difference between a rock and a ghost rock? One is a rock and the other one is a fucking ghost rock. I thought he was going to say one is a rock and one is a rock thrown by a ghost. You do realize you didn't answer my question, right? Ghost Rock! Huzzah! <laughs> yeah, throwing a rock like your problems. Like a champ, you gain two fun and one boldness. I think it's probably too late to switch up my choice. We only had six weeks, and it's week four now. You come upon Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread while her eating surfs chow down obediently at a neighboring table. I still don't get why you collect all these stupid forks and spoons and shit. What a noob! I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing? That's lame as hell. It's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat. Your serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally, they aren't. Serfs must eat with their hands as it fits their lower classes. So, you're saying the silverware collection has no practical purpose? Things have practical purposes? These two could go around and around like this forever unless you say something to resolve this dispute. 
Yay means right. Miri? Okay. Maybe it is time you started murdering people with your silverware. Lay off Miranda, Damien. What about your collection of exotic corpses? He has his collection of exotic corpses. That's different. Those corpses are useful. How? Useful for what? For, for holding down the important document. The, the paperweights? What important documents? Documents about very important. Ugh, fine. I guess I don't use these stupid corpses for anything. I just stack them in a shed and occasionally dress them up in silly costumes. There, are you happy? Extremely. Whatever. I'm gonna go play with my corpses. You stay behind with Miranda to admire her collection. She even teaches you how to use the romance fork smooth. become more charming yeah let's become more charming that's an epic dodgeball match takes place everything seems lost but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. In the middle of everything, a portal opens up and swallows Vera, Polly, and Liam. You dive in to rescue them straight into the season finale of the Interdimensional Bachelor. <sighs> Good lord. Help, I'm in danger of spraining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Yes! Oh my god, we're on a game show? Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my... I'm gonna win. I don't even care what the price is. Yo, what? Your wife? Your revolting premise? So, you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios. Our answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you? That's exactly problematic. I can't think of anyone who'd ever want to play such a tawdry dating game. Everybody stop raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question. And that's the spirit question number one. Describe your ideal marriage proposal. But before Polly can answer, you buzz in yourself. Now's your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing. I present you with my grandmother's wedding ring, still attached to my naked grandmother. Jaw unhinges, beast pour out. You unhinge your jaw and let the bees pour out. You definitely couldn't do this back in your home dimension. Ah, uh, stop that. You're supposed to answer with words, not bees. Probably should have specified that. You seem like a legitimate answer to me. What are you against avant-garde forms of expression? Words are so passe. Oh man, I was gonna say bees. You totally saw my answer. Wait, wait, I've got it. Polly unhinges her ghostly jaw and thousands of locusts pour out. Damn, you wish you thought of that. Locusts are way cooler. It doesn't matter though. The prince is so busy fending off bugs, he can't focus on keeping you in his dimension. You all teleport back home. You're pleased with your victory, although your throat is a little hoarse. Which is ironic, because a little horse isn't what came out of your mouth. You gain two creativity and one boldness. I think we need money, so we get money from the library. 
Dark Kicker. That day you spend some time on the library's PCs managing your Stark Kicker. Clever. You, just you deceive lots of people with a sensational video and impossible promise. Nice. You have 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs and you keep only two money. Liam and Damien are standing over a pile of books Liam has gathered. They're scowling intensely, as if the books have personally wronged them. So mainstream. Our school teaches the most common mainstream basic material imaginable. I think there's only one thing we can really do. Petition, petition the school to include works of value. Burn the books! Damien, you're... Absolutely right. The fight against anti-intellectualism must be telegraphed in strong action, not just empty words. Damien snaps his fingers and the books burst into flames. You have to admit, between the petition and fire, fire is the much cooler option. Unfortunately, it's at this exact moment that Crazy Martin chooses to appear. Oh no, not no. Oh no. No, 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 not again. You always think these things are my fault. Just because they are. I can't get attention. I'm seeing a nondescript yogurt resort concert this weekend. And the band only plays once in Blue Moon. When the lunar eclipse lines up with... There's no time to let Liam finish. Quick, step in and be the hero they need. Tell him there was a three-horned paper gobbler on the loose that was planning to devour the entire collection. Burn down the entire library. No point of origin. No proof no of the culprits. I'd like to say this is the right answer because it's technically true. We burn the whole thing down. There's no proof. We'll do this one. You start to... Enumerate the dangers of three horned paper gobblers. But it somehow sprouts into a horrifying tale on how you lost your virginity at a monster camp. It's a sword tale involving sangria, ill fitting lingerie, and being walked in on by the counselor who critiqued your clumsy sexual technique. Liam's eyes are getting wider and wider, and Daniel looks like he's getting sick. You're just getting to the part with the peanut butter and Crazy Marvin flips out and clocks you with his massive paw. That's not how- so we should have just set the library on fire. I'm getting to see where I need to go with this game. Just destroy everything. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for Crazy Martin. Even fucking detention would be better than hearing the end of that story. Those words, a thousand nondescript yogurt resort concerts won't wash them from my ears. I'm gonna fucking puke, I'm gonna fucking puke napalm. Well, you need to work on not oversharing, or at least come up with a much cooler story about your first sexual experience. You lose too fun and one charm, and your classmates don't know way too much about you. trying to comprehend your request. What is there to comprehend? It's really simple. Miranda, take my cell phone, snap a pic of me, face planting, and my food with my eyes closed and tongue out. But where for? Right here, Miranda. You're about to point out that where for means why. But luckily, Polly elaborates on her own, so you don't have to look like a fucking know-it-all. It's a new meme, Miranda. Like plinking or dabbing, it's called food poisoning. And it's dope AF. Don't you have, like, don't you have cool trends in your kingdom? Mm, I suppose we do. Oh, we have a fun trend called Revere Your Rulers. It's where you show nothing but the utmost devotion for the royal family. 
If you're good at it, you get lots of likes on social media. And also not executed. Do you ever listen to yourself when you speak? I bet you know some pretty cool trends, don't you, Blue? Heck yeah, you do. Don't you? I surely do. It's entitled Silverware Rare. And it's where you take your most expensive cutlery and dress it in a very fancy tiny outfit. Yep, it's called dying. There you go. Figured that was a her thing. Really? How have I not heard of this trend before? Beautiful silver and fancy dresses are two of my biggest passions. This trend sounds like it was invented for me. It was. Um, it may have been by you on the spot. But there's no need to go to that. What's your favorite meme? Spike style forks and ballet evening gowns? Seahorse steak knives with seahorse steak knives and frilly skirts? Teaspoons and tea dresses? This trend is no words. Yes, the glory of the spectacular combination would leave me speechless as well. Were I not so excited to create more memes with Blue? We'll have to meet up soon. Bring all your most exquisite chopsticks. I shall bring doll clothes in which to dress them. Yeah, totally. Hanging out with Miranda sounds amazing. Um, I guess it's time to try to go out and find some exquisite chopsticks? Week 5. Let's try to get more money. Poker face. That day you spent some time on the library PC playing some good old online poker. Okay, we'll end this episode here. We'll see what happens in the next episode. While playing good old fashioned online poker. I'm Taylor Kathy over now. Comment and subscribe. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.